Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 11th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to provide you with an update on Hurricane Michael, which is now a tropical storm centered over North Carolina and lashing North Carolina and Virginia with very heavy rain at this time. I'm also going to just provide you a bit of context with regards to the present hurricane season in the region of North America and the North Atlantic, which is still very active, as well as to provide some context regarding the recent hurricane strikes to the United States and to U.S. territories over the past two years during 2017 and 2018, all of which have occurred in a climate system that is now about 1.1 degrees Celsius hotter than the late 19th century average, which is used by IPCC as climatological baseline. But first I'm gonna go through a, a, a description of, of the impacts of Hurricane Michael and what has made Hurricane Michael so exceptional. And I'm gonna play this video feed in the background, which is a video feed of Mexico Beach, which has been described as devastated by the storm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play this feed. Michael was the third strongest storm on record to strike the US according to wind speed achieving a maximum sustained wind speed of 155 miles per hour as it intensified just prior to landfall. The storm was the second strongest storm on record to, to at, at landfall with, according to pressure, which measured 919 millibars at landfall. It's the strongest hurricane ever to strike the United States in October in our records. So far, we have a, a tragic loss of six lives due to the storm, and unfortunately, it is likely that this death toll will climb. The damages are likely to be in the billions, if not tens of billions of dollars of damage, as entire communities were destroyed by the storm, not just Mexico Beach, but large sections of Panama Beach, uh, large sections of Tyndall Air Force Base, and other communities in the path of Michael received heavy damage like what we are seeing here in this video feed. Cinder block and reinforced structures are reported to have been destroyed by some of the strongest winds of Michael. So very few features or very few structures were able to avoid damage from Michael's extreme winds and extreme storm surge. Tyndall Air Force Base was devastated, receiving damage to even reinforced structures, which is one of the reasons why the military itself is so concerned about human force climate change, because human force climate change's ability to amplify storms represents a physical threat to the materials that the U.S. National Defense Establishment relies upon. And presently from Florida all the way through Virginia, one million are now without power. So just an ongoing scene here of devastation as a result of Hurricane Michael. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a, a radar image of Michael at present with the center of circulation here, just to the west of Raleigh and approaching the Raleigh area the storm is expected to continue to move off to the east and northeast over the coming hours and to exit into the Atlantic Ocean sometime around midnight tonight, but not before lashing Virginia and the Carolinas with tropical storm force winds and very heavy rainfall. Michael is one of four storms now for four major hurricanes to strike the U.S. or to strike U.S. territories, including Harvey, Irma, I'm sorry, one of five major hurricanes to strike the U.S. 
including U.S. territories, including Harvey, Maria, Irma, Florence, and now Michael, over the past two years, so during 2017 and during 2018. And these strikes have occurred in a much warmer than normal world, and pretty much all of these strikes have human-caused climate change fingerprints upon them. You can't really separate out the influence of human-caused climate change on spiking the intensity of these storms. In addition, I'd just like to note that the North Atlantic is still very active with Hurricane Leslie out in the central and eastern North Atlantic with Tropical Storm Nadine moving through the tropical convergence zone and with Michael now at present over the eastern U.S. A satellite shot shows Michael moving over the eastern U.S., but also, in addition, we have Sergio, which is approaching the Baja region and is expected to dump copious amounts of rain over the coming days over parts of Texas. And as you can see in the satellite shot, you, we see the swirl of Leslie, which has been an extraordinarily persistent storm. It's been around for a few weeks now. And the swirl of convection and cloud cover associated with Nadine. Looking at the NOAA predicted precipitation forecast, it does look like Texas and Oklahoma and other parts of the central U.S. are under the gun for heavy rains due to the, to the tropical moisture coming in off of Sergio. And also over the next few hours, we're expected to see severe rains over parts of Virginia. I'd just like to again provide you with a look at sea surface temperatures, which have been such a key feature lending to the intensity of storms over the past two years, in particular near the United States, in the East Coast region, the Gulf Coast, Coast region, and parts of the West Coast. It's worth noting that even after the passage of Michael, sea surface temperatures remain above average for parts, parts of the eastern Gulf of Mexico. This despite upwelling, which typically brings cooler waters from the depths and is an indication that the heat is transferred into the ocean, not just at the surface, but at depth as well. So a lot of resilience to the above normal temperatures that we are seeing in the Gulf of Mexico and off the U.S. East Coast. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to Fahrenheit reading. And I just want to show you how ridiculously warm, according to this Earth Null School map, sea surface temperatures are just off the U.S. East Coast. With temperatures directly off the Virginia Beach region at 9 degrees Fahrenheit above average for this time of year. So there's still a lot of fuel for storms if, if they do form... In, in October, we traditionally tend to have less storms, but sea surfaces are so warm right now that there, there is a lot of fuel for storms if they do form. I'm going to go ahead and just switch over to sea surface temperatures so that we can look at some of these ocean surfaces and again flip over to the Fahrenheit reading. So sea surface temperatures near 80 degrees just off the Virginia coast and well into the 80s off the North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida coast. These temperatures off the Southeast coast are comparable to those that we are seeing now in the Caribbean. So these are sea surface temperatures that can support very intense hurricanes and also comparable to those that we are seeing in the Eastern Gulf of Mexico with the sea surface temperatures in the Western Gulf uh, hitting the upper 80s and, and approaching the the 90 degree mark in some locations. So very warm sea surface temperatures, which is a sing signature fingerprint of human caused climate change, still providing potential fuel for storms. And it looks like we are not out of the woods yet for this hurricane season, even after this major strike, this, this record strike by Hurricane Michael. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.